the road less traveled. Obviously, it's not a real physical road that we can go take a nice long drive down or a road that we can walk upon. It's not something that is a destination on a map. It's not a place we can put into our GPS and it'll tell us how to navigate through it. It's not this perfect road with two yellow lines down the middle, with police cars and street signs that tell us exactly where to go and how to navigate it. Rather, to me, the road less traveled is a state of mind, one that we all have the opportunity to reach and to access if only we choose to do so. The road less traveled, what an incredible concept. Because even though it can be challenging and scary and unknowing at times, it can be so rewarding. But let's just pretend for a moment that this road was an actual, real, physical thing. What would it look like? I don't think it would have any yellow lines. I don't think it would have any signs telling us where to go, how to navigate it. I think it'd be kind of chaotic. We'd have people driving every which way. There'd be twists and turns and cliffs and unexpected dips and, and bumps and rough patches everywhere we go. But it would be up to us to figure out how to navigate it. And that could be the most beautiful thing about the road less traveled. Now, I'm sure that all of us, if we look back at our own personal roads, we've been through some bumps and some rough patches, but that's just part of it. I know I have. When I was in elementary school, I was teased and bullied by the same group of girls over and over again. I was always kind to everybody else. I loved being a friend. I loved being positive. But they weren't always that way to me. And so they would tease me. They would exclude me from games at recess. They wouldn't let me sit with them at lunch. They'd call me names. They would laugh at me. I remember something that would happen often is I would love to sing. I'd love to sing as long as I can remember. And so often, when I would be left with nobody to play with on the playground, I'd sing to myself. And I remember these girls would come up to me and say, hey, Lizzie, can you sing a song for us? And I thought, okay, maybe this time they really mean it. Maybe this time they're excited. And so I would start to sing for them, and they would all gather in front of me and start chattering to themselves. Eventually, after a few moments, they would get up and they would laugh at me and call me names and run away. This was just one of the things that happened over and over again each day. But I would come home crying almost every single day, begging my parents to do something about it, to help me, to help get me through it. And after years of enduring this, something finally clicked. And it was the words of my dad when he said, I want you to remember that nobody has the power to ruin your day. And here I am, and I'm a young girl, and I'm thinking, okay, I, I don't understand this. How is it possible that throughout all of this, coming home feeling worthless, feeling like I'm nothing, how can I possibly remain triumphant and powerful through it all? And after a long time of thinking about it and talking about it, talking with my parents, trying to adapt this mentality of strength, I finally figured it out. And I not only figured out the meaning of that phrase, that I was the only one with the power to decide how I felt about myself, how I saw myself, what I was gonna do with my life and my days, but I realized that it was gonna be something that would take me through all of my days and my entire life. There was nobody except me who would ever tell me how I should feel about myself. There was nobody who would ever tell me how I should live my life. And most certainly, there was nobody who would ever tell me how to go along my road less traveled. And realizing this and not letting it get me down and coming out of it stronger, that was me following my road less traveled. And this experience taught me that our road is supposed to be unpredictable. 
It's not this, you know, beautiful, clean grid that we know what's going to happen at every single twist and turn. There are going to be things that we don't expect. There are going to be detours along the way that are going to be thrown at us from left and right. We're not going to know what to do with them at times. But we have to let those things teach us. We have to let those things make us grow and let us become stronger. And of course, it'd be easy if we just traveled the road that everybody else is traveling. It's already there. It's already kind of carved out for us. But imagine the growth and the motivation and the depths that we can experience if we do follow the road less traveled. And to me, that means staying true to yourself. So what does that mean? That is such a huge concept, being yourself. And it's something that we learn from the time of kindergarten. What it means to me is not letting others or their opinions or their actions or their ways come into your world, come into how you see yourself, how you view the world, how you choose to live your life. It kind of reminds me of a few quotes. By the way, if you ask any of the people who know me well, I'm a quote person. I will break out mid-conversation and start quoting things. But the first of which is this, character is who you are when no one is looking. Or, put in other words, it's what you do in the dark that puts you and keeps you in the light. Or how about this one? It's none of my business what other people think of me. Now that one was by a dear woman friend of mine. She has lived a lot of life, and I only hope to achieve half of the wisdom that she has. As long as we're true to ourselves, we don't need to worry about what others think of us. And if they don't like it, they're missing out. Also, finally, one of my favorite quotes. Sing like no one is listening. And love like you've never been hurt. Dance like nobody is watching. And live like it's heaven on earth. You know, throughout life, we have the opportunity every day to wake up and make choices, different choices throughout different times of the day. I've been to over 500 schools across the country talking about anti-bullying and positivity, and I've loved it. And I've talked to these kids about peer pressure, and my gosh, how hard that can be to overcome. For example, in the topic of bullying. If we're part of a group of people who's bullying somebody else, maybe we're not part of the actual bullying, but we see what's going on, and we don't do anything about it, even though we know it's wrong. Well, why? Because of the fear of being excluded or rejected or ostracized because of that. Because even though we might feel that something is right, we might not want to stand up and be the odd one sticking out. Or peer pressure or the need to be popular or to feel liked. Maybe we feel like we need to bully somebody else, put somebody else down in hopes that that might make us look cool, in hopes that that might get us friends, get us recognition. When the real way to fill ourselves and to get recognition is through love. And something that I think about every single day is that we have the choice to make all of our decisions and to go throughout our days out of love or out of fear. So fear might look something like this. Maybe we're afraid to stand up and say something because of the fear of being ostracized like we've talked about. Maybe we fear that if we don't project ourselves in a certain way that might make us look powerful or big or strong, we feel what's going to happen to us. The effective way to build ourselves up and to follow our road less traveled, the one that nobody else is ever going to follow because our road less traveled is only reserved for us, that's through love. 
You could even think of it in a way of pursuing a dream or a passion or a goal. We miss 100% of the shots that we don't take. So, if we have a fear of pursuing something or going for something because we think we might lose, well, what's the worst that can happen? We miss. And we get up and we try again. And that is living our days and going through our decisions through love. And letting that be our guiding principle. I mentioned I've been to over 500 schools across the country, talking to elementary and middle school students. I also have a digital program that's reaching over 5 million students worldwide. And I ask them to reach out to me on my social media and send me an, a message, an email. And I also engage personally with all of these students at each performance. And it breaks my heart to hear some of their stories. How they feel that they have to live their lives out of fear to survive. They feel like they don't have the ability to look for their road less traveled because of what somebody else might say, because of what somebody else might do. And I want us to think about the idea that each of us are capable of being a standout, of finding our purpose if we only take our road less traveled. Because I truly believe that each and every one of us, we have a purpose, we have a reason. Our road is there for us to walk on and to discover it little by little. Most of us are probably going to take our whole lives to figure out what our purpose is. But we have a strong purpose. And when we stay true to ourselves, when we let nothing else from the outside come into us, that is when we will just cruise down that road. And we'll be able to handle the things that hit us from left and right. It is then that we will be able to fully step into the person we've always been meant to be. The beautiful thing about the road less traveled is it's ever-changing. The road less traveled is never set in stone. We can wake up tomorrow morning and say, hey, today is the first day of the rest of my life, and I want to make my road bigger and better and brighter and more beautiful. And guess what? We can. I'd like to end by paraphrasing a quote that I heard in the eulogy of the late, great John McCain, who was undoubtedly a great American hero, no matter whatever our political views may be. It was in former President Obama's eulogy, and he quoted Ernest Hemingway when he said this. Today is only one day in all the days that will ever be. But what will happen in all the other days that will ever come can depend on what you do today. I think that these words would do very well at the top at each of our roads less traveled. Thank you. <laughs>